Hello and welcome back to Colonial Airstream. I'm Patrick Botticelli and today I'm going to take you through the smallest Airstream travel trailer series, the Bambi. The Bambi comes anywhere from 16 to 22 feet and it's available in different floor plans. There's a 16 RB with a rear bedroom, a 19 CB with a rear corner bedroom, a 20 FB with a front bedroom, and a 22 FB with a front bedroom. Today, I'm gonna to take you through the 16 RB. This trailer has a gross peak weight rating of 3,500 pounds, a dry weight of 3,000 pounds, net cargo carrying capacity of 500 pounds before options, and a hitch weight of only 430 pounds. Next to your length is 16 feet one inch, Exterior height to the top of the air conditioning is nine feet three. It is eight feet wide, and you have six feet four inches into your headroom. So let's take a look at the front of the trailer. We're gonna walk around, then we're gonna head inside so you check out those details. You have heavy duty solar stone guards that protect your front panoramic window. You have a 3M film here on the front that protects your body from rocks and, and small debris. All the Airstream trailers have heated tanks and a closed underbelly, so it's all wrapped up in aluminum underneath here. You have a step light, LED marker lights all the way around, has a Zip D manual awning. Now I already have it set out, but it's not out all the way. This would be our caravan mode because we have uh, clearance issues. Sometimes when you go to an uh, Airstream caravan, you're close by. So this awning could go all the way out or it could go part way out for clearance. We have some great videos on our YouTube channel that you could watch and their service tech tips. And we show you how to deploy the awning. We've covered it many times before. Solid boxed frame up front. This frame goes all the way through. It's all steel. You have two battery locations here, so you could put two Group 24 series batteries. This trailer is prepped for batteries, so you could use lead acid, AGM, absorbed glass mat, or lithium iron phosphate batteries. We always recommend the lithium iron phosphate because it's a little bit better battery technology with a longer runtime and a faster charge rate. This trailer has the one option which is available and is the 100 watt solar charging system. So there's a 100 watt solar panel on the roof, a solar charge controller, and a solar charge display already installed. And that's a $1,600 option and we highly recommend that. There's two 20 pound propane tanks up front with a uh, propane tank cover. Just lift this tether up and it gains you access to your propane tanks. Now these are a similar size that you'd use in a barbecue. They're five gallons a piece. And there's an auto switch over. So right now we have it pointed to this bottle and the sight gauge, this trailer's brand new so the tanks are empty. You can see it's red. If the tank was full, this would be green. And once this tank is empty, you could manually switch it over to the other bottle and run off of that bottle and take this one out and get it filled. Or you could leave them both on. It has an auto switch over. To get the bottles out, you just undo this wing nut over here, lift the bottle cover off, and you could get your propane bottles out to get them filled. Underneath the lid here, there is a QR code, and uh, this is great. Airstream puts them throughout the trailer in different areas where people might need some service help. You scan this with your cell phone and it brings you to the service page on Airstream's website with some really cool troubleshooting tips and some videos as well. Over here underneath the A-frame is the spare tire. So these are 15 inch rims and tires on board, and they do give you a spare. You pull the little pin out, Slide this one across, tire drops down, and then you crank up your hitch jack that's up front, and then you can get your tire out. And then the jack, you're gonna use the jack that your tow vehicle came with to jack up the trailer properly. And I'll show you the jack locations a little bit later. There's also a solar port here. If you decided to get an external solar panel and plug it into the trailer, you could hook up that panel here and there's some connections you'd have to do inside the trailer. Manual hitch jack up front. We do sell aftermarket here electric hitch jacks if you wish to add one. A 2 and 5 16th inch ball. Again, it's a 430 pound hitch weight, so you want to make sure your tow vehicle is compatible. The trailer also has brakes on board. It has a seven-way wiring harness. You want to make sure your vehicle has a seven-way wiring harness. It's very important that your vehicle not only has an electric brake controller, whether it's factory installed, aftermarket hardwired, or wireless, but you also want to make sure it has a 12-volt charge lead. 
Over here is a trailer breakaway cable. Colonial gives this nice little coupler here. It attaches firmly to your tow vehicle. If the two ever came disconnected, it pulls out this plunger. And as long as your trailer has batteries on board, it will activate the brakes and slow your trailer down. Never use this as a parking brake. It will rapidly drain your batteries in a matter of hours. Air Colonial Airstream also gives you a hitch coupler lock and it prevents this from getting lifted up, which if it's locked down, no one can get a ball underneath it, steal your trailer. There are other more enhanced locks available on the market and we do sell them here at our store. Safety chains, you always wanna crisscross those and attach them firmly to your hitch receiver. Over here is a barbecue quick disconnect port right underneath the A-frame here. There's a collar that slides back, a gas valve that turns on and off, and they give you about a three feet hose so you could use a low pressure grill outside. So if, if your grill is not low pressure compatible and you have a high pressure grill, well great, you have two 20 pound propane tanks over here. You can take one out and hook it right up to your grill. So always check compatibility first. Over on this side we have access to our freshwater tank fill. There's a 23 gallon freshwater tank on board that sits in a holding tank. And there's an on-demand pump, a 12 volt water pump on board that you would turn on, it pressurizes the system and it takes water from this tank and runs it through your faucets. That water, wastewater then goes down the drain into a combination gray black tank, which is 30 gallons. So gray tank would be your, gray waste would be your sink and shower, and black would be your toilet. It's combination, and they're both heated on this trailer. This is your VIN plate with tire pressure, tire size information. You also want to check your lug nut torque periodically. There is a guide here to check your lug nut torque. And a majority of the trailers, it's 110 foot-pounds of torque for aluminum rim and 100 pounds for your steel wheel uh, spare tire. Beautiful Bambi medallion on board. These are all aluminum, so it's not a sticker. You know, these last almost a lifetime of the trailer. You have belt line protection here where the two seams of Alcoa aluminum overlap and it's all buck riveted in place. This seals it up and cleans it up. You got rub rail connection over here. This uh, where the side sheet comes out and meets with the underbelly. This area here is nice and sealed. You have a city water inlet. So if you're, you're gonna go to a campground and you don't wanna run off your own fresh water tank, you have an endless supply of their water that they're providing you. You hook up a regular freshwater hose, I'll show you that when we get to the trunk, into this connection here. Have that firmly attached. Now it's not filling your tank, it's just supplying water to your plumbing system. So once you turn on a faucet, it's gonna allow more water to flow through. This also has a water pressure regulator built into it, so if you have an unexpected spike in water pressure at the campground, your trailer is protected. A lot of other manufacturers don't include one, so you have to do one externally. This is a black tank flush, and I'll tell you a little bit more about this when we get to the dump station. Over here is an outside utility shower. You can open this up, stick this on. You got hot and cold water outside, and you can hose things off externally. In the wheel well, there's a drip tube for your air conditioner. Up top, there's a 13,500 B2 air conditioning on board, which is standard. And it also has an electric heat strip built into it. Any condensation that air conditioning makes, instead of running water down the side and leaving stains, it drips through a drip tube that's on board and it will come over right up, over by the wheel. This also has a tankless water heater, Gerard tankless water heater. So this is not a storage compartment, it's a service access. And it has a pressure relief valve and drain here as well. But it gives you a continuous flow of hot water. So there's no worry about running out of hot water with a six gallon tank like typical RVs would have. There's also a 12,000 BTU force head air propane furnace on board, which not only heats the room, but it heats your tanks, which are an insulated chamber. 30 amp shore power connection. This is the smart plug. So what's really cool about this is it's actually safe and easier to use. 
The typical twist locked style connections, if you don't twist it, you don't lock it, you don't have a full connection and uh, you have a lot more resistance, uh, possibility of melting the power cord, not having good power on board. This you plug in and it locks in place. So you don't have to worry about twisting and, and locking. Really great. And it indicates if you have shore power connections. Sometimes you go to a campground and you plug in, you think you're plugged in and then you realize the breaker was shut off. So right here you would know if you have power going into the trailer before you actually went inside. Underneath here is the cable inlet. So if you go to a campground and they offer park cable, you can hook in here. You would, you would need to carry your own weatherproof uh, coax cable. This power cord, by the way, is about 25 feet. There's a light outside for your dump station and you take this cap off here and you'd firmly attach your waste hose, which we're gonna head up here now. So this is the waste hose storage tube. Colonial Airstream gives you a donut, and it all fits in here. You want to put the gloves on if you've used it before. An elbow end, and the actual waste hose. And it all fits in here. <clears throat> what you want to do is either screw this into the campground. Their threads are probably gonna be stripped. So you're gonna use the donut we give you. Get that firmly attached. Get your waist hose snapped into it and twisted. And then you're gonna attach it <clears throat> onto here and then you're gonna pull this handle straight out. Now inside the trailer there's gauges so you can tell how much waste you have and you can decide when it's time to empty it. But when you pull it out, all the waste will rush through and go through your waste hose. It's best practice when you're done emptying the tank to then hook up a garden hose, not your nice clean fresh water hose we give you, to this connection under pressure inside the tank it will clean the walls down and get all that residual waste out for you. Let that run for about five or 10 minutes. Just make sure that handle's open so the waste comes out. You don't want to build up pressure in the tank because it's going to get inside your trailer. Don't make that mistake. Been doing this for over 20 years. I've seen it before, at least twice a year. Wash and wax the exterior just like you would a car. Get the bugs off the front. Keep it away from road salt. If you get road salt on it, get it off as soon as possible. There's stabilizer jacks all four corners on this trailer. We have the back two deployed down. It comes with the tool to crank them up and down. And then we also sell a drill adapter at our dealership if you want to hook them up to a cordless drill. LED taillights, wireless backup camera standard on all traditional Airstream travel trailers. It is a dealer installed option if you have a base camp. A license plate bracket over here, tinted glass, safety glass, emergency exit. This whole thing is emergency exit. This is a venting window with an insect screen. Insulated and lockable and weather sealed rear trunk compartment. This is pretty wide. You can see the double gasket here. You can see how thick it is for the insulation. And Airstream gives you these starter bins. There's a whole bunch in here. The compartment's also lit. And you can see, this is a good way, like if I'm showing a customer to construction, a lot of people would assume because it's laminate, it's just particle board underneath, but it's actually plywood. It's Italian light ply, a very high quality lightweight plywood with laminate on both sides. So this is not a sticker or decal. Uh, this is laminate, so it's easy to wipe down and uh, very, very, very durable. <clears throat> Over here is some of the items that come in the Colonial Airstream RV starter kit. So hitch lock you get, full tanks of propane, waste hose, water hose, some gloves, power cord adapter, so that 30 amp shore power plug, you go to campground and plug in, great, you can run everything. If you want to bring it home, you want to plug in the trailer, we give you an adapter so you can plug it into a regular household electric outlet. Just remember, don't run your air conditioning when you're plugged into one of these adapters, it's too much amperage, it'll pop the breaker. Toilet paper, you want something that's RV septic tank safe, and tank deodorizer. It's all in these bins back here. Vinyl flooring throughout the trailer, it even runs into the trunk. And you, do they give you these protective mats too that protect the bottom of the trunk area. And you can see when I close this and twist and push, see how it pulls it nice and tight right in. It keeps the, any water out and you can lock them both. And these are not like key to like, like most RVs have the same key. Uh, these are special keys that Airstream uses. Over here we have an outside electrical outlet. 
So this will only work when you're plugged into shore power at a campground. The screen door attaches, boom. So on a windy day, your door's not blowing around. This slides across so you have access to your handle. You swing this around, it locks in place. All aluminum, TIG welded. You can buy screen door guards if you have pets. We sell them in parts. And then when you're done, this snaps right in place. And then the door is actually insulated as well. And you have a double lock. You have a deadbolt lock, key on the outside, and you have a handle lock, key on the outside. Two separate keys. But it gives you that nice signature bank fold shut. Check out these beautiful cast hinges. Over here we got a bathroom window with a privacy shade, a gutter rail over the entry door there so the water doesn't run straight down. Goodyear endurance tires. These are uh, inflatable up to 80 PSI, up to 80 miles an hour. They're STs for trailer, 225-75 R15. And it has uh, electric drum brakes on board. Over here is the entry step. This just pops right in place. Grip tape, so on your way out you get some grip. Underneath the uh, vinyl floor, we have uh, Transcore composite flooring, so it's not a plywood, it's not an OSB, it's a composite floor, which has better screw retention, has a little bit of insulating factor. It's not separate sheets, it's one sheet for the whole entire trailer, so you have no squeaks that you typically get on tongue and groove plywood, and it could get wet and it won't rot out. Fire extinguisher by the entry door, and you can see this door frame, it's all extruded aluminum structure. They do a great job building these doors, and it's gonna last the lifetime of the trailer. Grab handle to get in. When you get in, there's a trash pail here by the entry door. There's also a drawer. In the drawer, they give you a little tool that you can put sockets on the end. There's the hose for your external grill that you could use. They make it short on purpose so you don't do anything silly like drag it around and cook under your your awning and cause a fire. Now the, the decor that we're inside of this trailer, this is called ocean. So the only difference between the two decors, which is dune or ocean, is the color of the cushions. The bedspread, countertops, laminate, everything stays the same and all the Bambies, you just get to pick the color of the cushion material. High density foam, Performatex uh, fabric here, which is very, very durable. And then what my favorite feature is when you sit at this dinette, you have a panoramic view all the way around. So I could sit here and you could see everything in this trailer. And the windows are tinted. And you have full blackout curtains up front for complete privacy if you would like it. Over the dinette, you have a LED light that's hand operated over here. And this whole thing, this folds down into a bed. So this trailer could actually sleep up to four people. Actually, all the Bambies could sleep up to four people. This is 40 inches wide by 91 inches this way. So the way it works is you take your cushions, we'll get these pillows out of the way, unsnap them from the wall, and you can see, look at this great stitching job. There's zippers on the back. They do an excellent job on these cushions. Lift them up like this. Okay. Now you got space here because this table lifts up. It slides out of little cleats that are on the wall. Snap the leg in. Table swings down. Lays between the benches. Has little rubber grommets to keep it square. Then you slide this over. Take this over here, same thing. Then these separate and they squeeze right in the middle. So what's nice about this is you could use this as a footboard and headboard for the bed. And I'm 5'9 and I could fit across even with the footboard and headboard on. What a lot of people do too is you want full length, these are actually designed to slide underneath. Or you could put them against the back wall and make this into like a deep lounge if you wanted to and put some extra pillows here. That front window opens all the way out. 
two roof lockers over here. Lots of room inside. You got two speakers on board and there's a Clarion Bluetooth stereo. There's also a USB charge port next to the stereo. And then this is the box for the wireless backup camera. So it actually comes with a monitor that goes inside your tow vehicle. You plug it into the 12 volt socket, turn on your parking or headlights, which is always best practice when you're towing a travel trailer, have your parking lights or headlights on, and that'll power up your camera. You can leave it on when you're driving, see who's behind you. Also, we got some switches over here. So I got light switches for the inside and the little step light switch down by the door. Underneath the dinette, there's also an electrical outlet. Again, any electrical outlet, you need to be plugged into shore power in order for that outlet to work. Now, let me just dive into this side so I can show you some of the systems that are underneath. This lid lifts up, gives you access to your solar charge controller, Blue Solar MPPT 150 slash 35. Your 23 gallon freshwater tank, your water pump, low point drains for winterization, and a lot of your electrical. Don't store things in this compartment. It's not designed to do so. All right, so over here underneath the dinette, we have a propane leak detector and a carbon monoxide detector. We have your battery kill switch. You can actually shut the trailer down, shut the battery system down for long-term storage. 3.1 cubic foot Nova Cool 12 volt compressor style refrigerator. It's very deep. It's got a freezer up top. Put the safety latch on when you're driving. Two burner gas cooktop with electronic ignition. Whenever you're using this, you wanna make sure you open up your fantastic fan. This has a manual lid and a variable speed control. And you, we, can, we sell accessories, like a little hood you can put on the outside so you can leave it open when it's raining. And then this screen is actually quick release so you can clean the dust and the insects out of it. Overhead roof locker storage, smoke detector with nine volt battery, GFSI protected electrical outlet, kitchen faucet, hot and cold water, stainless steel sink, aluminum blinds, and then this window, when you pop up the blinds, you crank this out, you got an insect screen. So you have a window here, here, and one in the back. You have three windows total that open all the way out. This drawer opens up. You got an area here to store some silverware. This tray com uh, comes with it too. And a television remote for the TV. Contour, regular microwave on board. You have to be plugged into shore power for this. And then this flips down for additional storage over here. Over on this wall with the optional solar charging system, we have the solar charge display, sea level two tank monitoring system. So I can monitor how much battery I have. I have 13.1 volts, fresh water capacity in percentages. So instead of thirds and quarters, like a lot of RVs have, they actually give you in percentage. So very precise reading and the black gray tank combination. Tankless water heater controls over here. Basically just turn it on, set your desired temperature. 120 degrees. Turn on each faucet when you want to use it. If you want hot water, all the way to the highest, hottest setting. If it's too hot, turn your temperature down here. When you shut it off, tankless water heater shuts off. When you turn on the faucet, it sense, senses flow and fires back up the water heater. Up top here, we have the 13,500 BTU air conditioning on board. There's vents on the side, front and back. You just spin the, the, the dial to your desired speed. Turn your temperature hot, cold. Has electric heat pump on board, so, sorry, electric heat strip on board, so you just turn it to optional heat. And then you have louvers, so you could dump air straight down, you could do it out the sides, and your filter's right over here. Check out how they build this bathroom module. This is extruder aluminum on the corner. So they know you're gonna be loading things in and out. They don't want you to chip the laminate, so they give you extruded aluminum. On the bottom, where you're gonna kick it with your shoe, they have aluminum panel. Again, it's laminate over plywood, coat hooks over here, whiteboard, little bumper at the entry door so you, if you forget the duck on the way out, you're not gonna slam your head. Aluminum goes all the way down to this trunk area. So that rear trunk that we're at before, this is a pass-through. You could actually leave these doors open and load larger items through or you could gain access to those bins. You got your fuses and breakers over here and the furnace over here. In the bathroom, we have a towel bar at the back of the door. 
This is a wet bath, so it's a toilet and shower combination. It's very efficient in a small trailer. Now I'm 5'9", I got my boots on, so I'm a little bit taller. But I got some headroom. The interior height is six feet, four inches in this trailer. If I want privacy, I just pull down the shade. Waterproof toilet paper holder, so you can have your toilet paper in if it got wet. There's a shower curtain that pulls across and covers this side, and then there's one on this side that covers this area. And you shower right over the toilet. The toilet on this model is a plastic toilet for weight savings. Not just, uh, there are porcelain toilets available on the heavier trailers. Shower wand, hot and cold water, hangs up on the wall. It's got a pause feature. There's a medicine cabinet over here. Say you got a wet, small wet towel, like a hand towel. Because there's a clothesline that pulls across, you can lock it in place. And then the shower drain plug is right there, and you got a nice threshold to get out. But the, the bottom here is all uh, fiberglass, and it's very durable, easy to clean. It's a pretty big compartment. All, and then when you get out of the shower, if you like want a dressing area, they give you this privacy shade curtain, and it comes on snapped. And it pulls all the way across, and you can block out just the bedroom area if you want. Very convenient. And the reason why they do that is because your wardrobe, where your clothes would probably be stored, is right over here. If you look inside the wardrobe, there's actually another QR code here off to the side. I have the pillows for the bed stored in here. There's a hanging rod, a light, and then a service access on the bottom. And then this is the owner's bag that comes with the trailer. So all the owner's manuals and everything are in here. The bed in the back is 48 by 78. It's a really long bed. It's a really nice thick pillow top memory foam mattress on board. Comes with the, the decorative bed cover. On the wall here, there's a thermostat. You turn it on to the left, set your temperature here. Furnace will kick on. Once it hits your desired temperature, it shuts off, kicks on and off. There's USB charge ports here at the head of the bed. There's even a hamper here, which is pretty big. You can put extra pillows and bedding in there. Overhead roof locker storage in the back goes up. There's two extra lights here. This window here in the back opens. Just crank it out a little bit. Then you got your emergency exit. It hinges out. So this is designed just for emergencies, but I have seen customers prop them open and put little removable insect screens in. There's another hamper at the foot of the bed, and then this television is on an articulating arm. It's got a little lock mechanism, and you can swing it around. So if you're sitting at the dinette, you could actually watch it from there. And this TV even has a little uh, Blu-ray DVD player built into the side of it, so you can watch movies back here. On the wall, there's an antenna booster. So there's a 12 volt booster for the antenna, and that's for your radio and television. So you press the little button in, that gives the television an amplified power for the antenna, and then the TV's plugged into a 12 volt socket. So you don't need an inverter, you don't need to be sh plugged into shore power to use your television. And there's even an electrical outlet here in the bedroom. I hope you enjoyed the tour today. This Airstream is available at Colonial Airstream, Millstone Township, New Jersey. The MSRP is $63,600, and that includes the national destination charge of $2,500 and the optional solar charging system at $1,600. Our website is colonialairstream.com. Our telephone number is 800-265-9019. And if you love the long form videos, we also do short form videos on our YouTube shorts, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook, so make sure you follow us there. Well, I'm Patrick Botticelli, and I'll see you next time.